welcome to the Blindfold Chess Podcast. Simon Kim Williams, also known as Ginger GM, is a British grandmaster who has made significant contributions to the chess world as a player, commentator, and author. He is known for his innovative and aggressive playing style, and his books and videos often focus on unorthodox opening ideas and attacking strategies. Born in 1979, William started playing chess around the age of six. His father, also a strong chess player, taught him many of the openings that he still uses, like the Dutch defense. He received his first FIDE rating of 2255 when he was 14. He finished seventh in the 1997 European Under-20 Championship and finished second in the Smith & Williamson Young Masters Tournament of 1998. He finished earning his Grandmaster norms in 2006, but he was not classified as a Grandmaster until he cracked the 2500 rating barrier, which happened two years later at the Hastings Tournament of 2008. One of Williams' most notable accomplishments was winning a game with the Hammerschlag opening towards the end of the British Championship in 1999. What is the Hammerschlag? That is the opening that starts one pawn to f3, e5, then king to f2. That's that's not great. <laughs> Williams has placed second in the British Championships, a tie for first in the South End Chess Congress, and the London Chess Classic, as well as outright winning the British Blitz Championship. Williams is also a well-respected commentator. He has provided live commentary for major chess events such as the Gibraltar Chess Festival, Isle of Man, and a number of online tournaments for ChessBase and Chess.com. In addition, Williams has authored several highly regarded chess books including The Killer Dutch and Play the Classical Dutch. He is credited with 11 books, 9 chess coaching DVDs, including a course on Mikhail Tal, his favorite player. When asked why he was his favorite player, he said, quote, because he was a lunatic, end quote. He is a frequent guest in online video courses on iChess.net and Chessable, as well as his own social media presence, primarily on YouTube. He has branded himself as Ginger GM on social media due to his fiery hair and beard color, to his 80,000 plus YouTube subscribers and 30,000 plus Twitch followers. As Ginger GM, he has helped popularize the concept of Harry the H-Pawn, referring to the flank pawn and how disruptive it can be to opponent positions, a concept also frequently used by Alpha Zero. He has names for the other pawns including Airy with an A, Barry the B pawn, Charlie the C pawn, Derek the D pawn, Eddie the E pawn, Freddy the F pawn, Gary the G pawn, and then lastly Harry the H pawn. Each has their own purpose for attacking and restricting your opponent. Overall, Williams is a highly accomplished and respected figure in the chess world. His successes as a player, commentator, and author have made significant contributions to the game, and he continues to be a major presence in the chess community. Today, we are going to the 2017 Four Nations Chess League. Simon Williams versus Peter Solray. Now, if we're ready... Let's begin. One pawn to d4. Pawn to g6. Two pawn to e4. Pawn to d6. Three knight c3. Bishop g7. 4. Pawn to f4. Pawn to a6. 5. Knight f3. Pawn to b5. 6. Bishop d3. Knight d7. 
7. Pawn to a4. The move pawn to a4 is a bit unusual since white is not castled or have his pieces fully developed, but it does help achieve a couple of goals. What is that? First off, it forces black to make a decision to either defend the pawn or to push it forward. Both of those decisions soften up the b5 square a little bit for white's pieces. It also helps de-incentivize black from playing pawn to c5 since the b5 square is weaker. So it's overall disrupting black's queenside play. Pawn to b4. Eight, knight e2. Pawn to a5. Nine, kingside castle. Knight g to f6. 10, pawn to e5. Knight d5. 11, knight g5. Pawn to h6. So white moved the knight to g5 and it is currently being attacked by the pawn on h6. The white knight has six squares that it can go to, or it can stay there to be captured. What square is best for the knight? Twelve, knight e6. Pawn f captures e6. 13. Bishop captures g6 check. King f8. Fourteen. Knight g3. After the knight sacrifice, it appears white is not getting the knight back right away and is instead trying to play off of a positional advantage. Currently, how many pieces does white have on the king side? That would be three, the bishop on g6, the knight on g3, and the rook on f1. If you were to draw a line down the middle of the board, from the A file to the D file, and E to H, how many black pieces are stuck on the queen side? That would be five. The rook on A8, the bishop on C8, the queen on D8, and the two knights on D7 and D5. King g8. Fifteen, queen h5. Rook h7. Sixteen, bishop captures h7 check. King captures h7. Seventeen, pawn to f5. Knight f8. Eighteen, queen f7. Knight d7. Nineteen, bishop captures h6. Over the past five moves, white has increased the number of p 
pieces attacking on the king side while removing black defenders. For black, the five pieces that were on the queen side have not moved. Queen g8. Twenty. Queen g6 check. King h8. Twenty-one. Pawn f captures e6. Knight f8. 22, bishop captures g7 check. Queen captures g7. Twenty-three, rook captures f8 check. Queen captures f8. Twenty four, Rook F one. Black resigns. Currently, the Black Queen is under attack on F eight when Black resigned. I want to look at two moves to see why Black resigned. The first would be Queen to G eight. What does White do? That would be Queen to h6, check. Black queen to h7. Then the white rook to f8, checkmate. So if we didn't go that route, if black were to play queen to d8, what is white's continuation? That would be rook to f7 with the threat of checkmate on g7 and on h7. If black were to try to defend both with queen to g8, then we see the same solution of queen to h6 check, queen to h7, and then rook to f8 checkmate. It was actually very impressive to see how well Williams utilized his pieces in the attack while keeping all of black's pieces out of play. If we look, every white piece has moved and every white piece is active in the attack, whereas the knight on d5 is out of play, the bishop on c8 has not moved, and the rook on a8 has not moved. So that is all that we have for this week. Tune in next time, where we will continue to work on our blindfold skills and examine another game of The Masters. <laughs>